Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PC Gamer Show for what's today, January 10th? What's the year? January 10th. January 10th, 2018. 2018. It's 20 great teen because there's a lot of great (laughs) PC games on the way. Uh, (laughs) I'm your host, James Davenport, uh, associate editor here at PCGamer.com. Also with me is Wes Fenlon. Hello. Features editor. I'm so reeling from 20 great teen. 20 (laughs) 20 great teen? I'm reeling from that. uh, Wait, is 20 great... Okay, never mind. I was thinking, what is 2017 if 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 you're still reeling from it? Like, I mean, that one left a scar. For that one sure. left a scar. It was a rough. 2018 year. is just like it's been too good, too too soon. So no, I'm just reeling from your te- the terrible. Oh, the terrible pun. The words that came out Fuck, of your mouth. I thought, I thought you were having a good year. <laughs> no, I mean uh, it's fu- it's been fine. Ten days in, like, <laughs> not going to draw any conclusions. Yeah, yet, we're but. fine. <laughs> just going to do this 35 more times. We'll be good. Uh, also with us, Austin Wood, our indie news editor. How are you Hello. doing? He's uh, now Pretty in the good. center of the screen. Um, place of a, prominence. Yeah, place of very, very important prominence. You're looking pretty good there, I think. Uh, we have a... <laughs> I, have a nice, I have a nice shrine. Can reach into your head. Pull really? out these thoughts. <laughs> mm, mm, delicious. <laughs> Find some pitches for me, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Empty in there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, forgive us for any, like, audio issues uh, or video issues uh, because we got a new table, which... Which changes all sort of audio fucked everything and, up. and video. Yeah. I mean, we had to move everything around, and our video guy, who we would normally consult with on what to do uh, and to check some of that stuff, is is gone. He's at CES yes, right now. Yes, and we're going to talk about CES because that's still relevant to games sometimes. The Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's barely relevant to games, but it is more relevant to PC hardware yeah. a, a little bit. You know, it's, yeah. it's definitely like a smartphone and internet of things show but there's always a little bit of pc stuff there uh less so over the years um but there's some two things in particular we'll get to in in a minute that i think are stand out three if you want to count the kodak crypto mining thing but we'll get Uh. there uh but start uh i want to know uh how you guys been doing over break what's uh any big changes you get up to anything fun we were gone for a while I got a bit of a cold. Surely. Oh, yeah. That's your highlight? That's what you start with? Uh, Not too bad. I'm getting getting better. But I I played a decent number of games over the break. Not not much on my PC. Um, Not much, like, actually at... I don't think I sat at my desk the entire winter break. Oh, goddamn. Um, But I did play some laptop stuff. I did some Steam in-home streaming a little bit. I'm going to click this now playing button so people know what we're doing. Yeah, so uh, I played played some Thimbleweed Park over the break uh, with my girlfriend, which was pretty fun because we previously played through um, uh, Day of the Tentacle and uh, the the remastered version, which was a lot of fun. And Thimbleweed Park felt like a pretty good follow-up from that. Uh, having played a sequel to a uh, Gilbert game, why not just go, you know, straight to the source, right? So we played yeah, probably a good, good like, four or five hours of that, something somewhere along those lines. I feel like we're kind of in, in the meat of that game at this point. We're, we're right. pretty into it. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny. I think the puzzles strike a good balance between uh, silliness and not having the, like, really absurd your stupid uh, <laughs> solutions that adventure games were sort of yeah. came to be known for. Uh, most everything's pretty logical, pretty easy to figure out, um, but is still still has an element of goofiness to it. So that's a fun game. I definitely recommend it to to any adventure game players. Yeah, it was one of my favorite this year, uh, and I thought the adventure game was dead. But apparently not. Not dead. Not dead. Uh, anything else you get up to? Uh, I did just just finish uh, earlier this week uh, Virtue's Last Reward, which is part of the Zero mm. Escape series. Aha. On, on PC, yeah. I'm not sure actually how they... Uh, I forget how it's named. I was playing it on the 3DS. There's a collection of the games yeah. on Steam. Do, do you remember what it's called, Austin, on the Steam version? is the Nonary Games something. Yeah, the, yeah, the Nonary Games. There's a, a bundle on Steam. I think it might be somewhere else. 
Yeah, so the, the Nonary Games bundle is the first two games, which is 999 and Virtue's Last Reward mm-hmm. is like kind of a combo unit. And yeah. then the third yeah. game is Zero Time Dilemma, which I don't think is in mm-hmm. the bundle. I think you have to buy that one separately because it's a lot newer. A little fresher, yeah. Um, yeah. But those games are... So they're, they're visual novels, which I have not played many of, mm-hmm. but they... Uh, they have some interesting like time bending mechanics where kind of the point of the way the game is structured is you're going to play through and get some horrible ending where everybody dies. Mm-hmm. You're like trapped in it's mm-hmm. almost like saw. You're like trapped in this madman's yeah, yeah, yeah. like weird puzzle hell and you have to find your way out and then the story will end up being this extremely crazy convoluted like mix of metaphysics and time travel yeah. and just bizarre stuff so when you play through virtue's last reward once you you'll kind of choose a decision path to go through and it'll either end in kind of an unsatisfying ending or will actually give you like a to be continued and then force you to go down another story path and eventually once you've done all the paths and figured out every piece of this complex story you'll kind of unlock some extra paths that you'll then go down to kind of get the true ending Uh, so I think I liked the original 999 more actually because it's it's slightly more grounded, which is kind of a weird thing to say about these games because they're... <laughs> that shit goes off the rails right away in that first one, too, yeah, so right. to call that grounded. They're ridiculous. Um, but I, rem- I have slightly fond of memories of playing that one about yeah. three years ago. Uh, Virtue's Last Reward, I wouldn't say I liked the story that much, but I like the structure of the game. I think okay. it's a really cool idea, the way you play it. Uh, it just takes a little too long to get there. Like, in 999, it didn't overstay its welcome because I did two paths through that game and I got the true ending. And in this one, you have to do every single path. So in the end, when you get there, it's like, oh, I get it how that piece fits into this piece and this is what happens in this timeline. But you got to play it like a good 30 hours to get all that. And that is a a lot for... That's a lot of text to read. (laughs) For an anime text game, it was was a little more than I wanted to play. Uh, But it's still a really cool game. So if, if you're into visual novels, I highly recommend that series. Right on. I might I might just this is a good segue cuz I have also been playing a visual novel. A little yeah. Danganronpa? Danganronpa? You guys know Danganronpa. this? Danganronpa. Danganronpa. It's yeah, really I love uh, I love your games. Um Evil Teddy Bear, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I know yeah. about Danganronpa. Uh so I, I didn't play a bunch of this over the break. I maybe like 6 hours into the first game, but uh, the premise is well, surprisingly similar. Uh, it's basically a, a bunch of students uh, get selected for this very prestigious school, and uh, <laughs> from there they go to the school. Kind of all all end up unconscious somehow. Wake up, and the school is barricaded uh, from the inside out. So all of the windows are just clapped over with big metal plates, and uh, there's there's no exit. There's also this strange. <laughs> Uh, black and white teddy bear, somehow sentient, maybe a robot being remotely controlled. What's his name? Uh, Monokuma, I think. Monokuma, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Monokuma sets out these rules for this school you're in, and uh, (laughs) you are to live, I mean, it sounds nice to begin with, because it's like, you're going to live here communally forever, which kind of sucks, or you can graduate, and to graduate, you have to murder somebody. But not only do you have to murder them, you have to murder them without being caught. And anytime a student is murdered among these 15 students that you meet up with, uh, there is a trial held. So there's an evidence gathering period. Everyone has like the evening to gather evidence um, and form their arguments. And then there's this, a trial is held in this, (laughs) you know, I was expecting something similar to like Phoenix Wright where. Mm. uh, This is a different kind of trial, I'm guessing. It's. I think it's uh, it, it uses some of the same ideas, like you maybe stop a conversation to present evidence. But the way in which you do that, like people might uh, have the floor and people will be discussing an incident or a p- part of the incident. Uh, and uh, you will have these things called truth bullets. And these are, as represented in the UI, literally like mm-hmm. chambered up in, in a gun. 
uh, and a truth gun, a truth gun. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the text. So there will be a rolling argument and a timer on screen, or at least a rolling conversation and a timer on screen. And this conversation will like repeat endlessly. So like six people will say something. Oh, I saw so and so in in the hallway doing this. Well. That means this is you killed them. No, this means you. And here's my reason why. And if you your truth bullet, uh, which is represented or it's referencing something you found in the investigation period. That's what your truth yeah, bullets like each are. Bullet is a statement. Yes. Uh, you then literally like have to aim and fire your truth bullet, your statement, your counter evidence, and hit the text on screen to like knock it away and basically yeah, you, do your you objection the lie <laughs> is, is there a skill element there like can you miss and mess uh, yeah up? you can um I, i'm pretty early on so i don't know how like how difficult that becomes mm -hmm. like ha have you played this austin you've played these before yeah i played the uh, the first and second one okay which i think came on, on steam a while back and the third one's there too i need to pick up yeah so does, does that become like a, a and like a part of the, the skill test, like actually aiming. Yeah, like I won't, uh, I'll try not to spoil sure. too much of it, but sort of as you get deeper, um, there's sort of more like layered mechanics of things you have to keep up with in the UI. Like there's more mini games added in. Oh, damn. Uh, where you have sort of starting with the truth bullets and you get more and more stuff to do. So it definitely becomes like, it's not quite like on the level of like the, the level of a rhythm game, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's some hand eye coordination for sure. I really wish Phoenix Wright had truth bullets yeah. so that every time somebody <laughs> perjures himself, at, oh on the God. stand you could just shoot them in the head <laughs> with a truth <laughs> bullet and they're just dead and they're out of your freaking trial so that you don't have to worry about them Done lying for. to you 15 more oh, times yeah. before you finally figure out what was going on um yeah it's it's i think uh i typically don't go for i think we were talking about this earlier in the week wes is like i think we lo like the premise of a lot of visual novels and we like the characters and the style and and uh I certainly like the how bizarre these court sessions are, um, mm -hmm. but I think uh, a lot of visual novels are very long-winded in the way that they. Maybe it's a translation thing. Maybe it's just like a playtesting thing in that they are, uh, or a cultural thing. Like just you know, as far as anime and such goes, but uh, mm -hmm. they really repeat themselves and like really hammer home the same shit over and over. And I think over that's and over. probably a big reason why I find them tiring in a way like I, I don't get exhausted reading a book I'm not yeah, yeah. like in the book I'm not like oh there's so many words this book just keeps having words yeah. <laughs> like, but in a visual novel I sometimes feel that and I think it is at least partially a Japanese tendency to yeah. restate sort of what just happened or what characters mm -hmm. are thinking just ad nauseum and it's like I get it. Like I was, I was reading it the the first two to three times that you said this. I don't need to read it again, and that just adds a lot of extra yeah. kind of cruft and stuff that you don't need. Uh, so that that makes them pretty tiring to to get through. Pretty but, exhausting. But the setups are usually so, at least for the the ones that we're talking about, yeah. are so weird mm -hmm. and fun and compelling. Yeah, and uh, it yeah. keeps you playing. The ways in which some people die uh, are just a absurd in this game and it's it's like to the point of it, it's it's disgusting but also just hilarious <laughs> like, and they got to keep the school prestigious yeah, somehow yeah it's, you can't it's, let the riffraff survive so I, I, I i'm enjoying it if only oh god what happened to austin uh oh is he dead i don't know what happened to him i don't know we'll, we'll figure out austin in a minute here <laughs> uh but if only to uh looks like we lost the connection on his laptop uh, we'll figure that out in one second. But if if only to just see what the hell is going to happen next, um, it's it's totally worth playing. Uh, we're going to take a quick like one minute thing here to see what the hell's going on with this laptop. So should I just talk, or do you want are you going to take a break? Uh, well, should I just orate? Yeah, just uh, tell us more about games and this what you did over the break. This would be a good time for me to like know a poem or something by heart <laughs> that I could just. Uh, could just go off what else did i do over the break i actually played uh so another not not a pc game but a game that i played a good chunk of over the break uh that's kind of pc adjacent is mario and rabbids kingdom battle on the switch uh which if you haven't heard of this game is essentially mario but x XCOM, but with Mario and with ubisoft's little goofy rabid characters uh, and that game is really shockingly fun it was really good yeah actually i played a good amount of that 
a couple months ago. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. I think, Austin, are you back? Can you hear us? I am back. Okay, here. sorry about that. Uh, don't yeah, know what no happened, problem. people. Uh, stuff. Internet happens. I'll get your face all normal looking in a second. But yeah, just to chip in, I think um, there's a lot more. It kind of showed me this Rabbids game. We're talking about a Nintendo game, which is going to be good for what you're going to talk about in a sec, Austin. Uh, Segway. It, it shows that, like, the XCOM formula, that turn based strategy, grid based strategy, is like. There's a lot to do there yeah. uh, that has not been explored on the PC. So the, the interesting thing about it, uh, to me, the most interesting thing is, you know, it doesn't have a lot of the meta layer stuff that XCOM does, building your base, but it does have characters with, um, each character has their own skill tree with some unique abilities and stuff. Um, but it, it really places an emphasis on movement which is not yes. really a, it's not as much of a thing in XCOM, right? And in, in regular XCOM, your positioning matters a lot, whether you're in cover, getting a good angle on yeah. the enemy, but your movement abilities aren't really a thing. It's like get in position, take the shot. In in the Rabbids game, every character you can do like a dash through attack where you can kick an enemy if you like run through their position you can also do team ups where you'll mm -hmm. like leap off of one of your characters to propel yourself further and mario can stomp on enemies so you get in these positions where you can like kick somebody or you can leap off one of your characters then stomp on the enemy and bounce off of them somewhere else so you get in this mindset of if you're kind of in close quarters, like every turn, you should be dashing through them before you take a shot. And so movement becomes a really important part of just getting extra damage in on the enemies every round. I will say, did you play the latest expansion? And some reason I'm forgetting the name, War of the Chosen? I have not. XCOM 2. Yeah. Uh, some of the uh, specialist classes, I'm forgetting what they're actually called, but like do, now that I think about it, rope in different kind of movement abilities. That's cool. Uh, there's one I remember that uh, it, it's basically a, a total melee build and you are rewarded for running up to people and hitting them uh, because you will get a sometimes a bonus move or you will get a chance to deflect all damage on your next turn. So nice. I think XCOM is getting there and I'm curious to see if we get another expansion for XCOM 2, what kind, I don't know, maybe, I wouldn't doubt because I do remember seeing some tweets from Jake Solomon uh, about the rabbits about game. the rabbits game and i wouldn't doubt that he's internalizing some of that for sure and i would hope to see that in whatever we see next for xcom yeah. um but <laughs> as far as what austin's been playing it's also a nintendo game welcome to the nintendo show that yeah yeah i was among uh, the many people this yes. holiday to open up a uh, switch for christmas i i helped buy a friend to switch he helped buy me a switch and there was a bunch of friends and families intermediary parties yes, um, nice. so i've been playing I've been playing Breath of the Wild, which is what you do when you get a Switch. You go, up, <laughs> go buy Breath of the Wild and disappear. Um, I'm like 50-something hours into it. It's just, it's really good. Um, it's incredibly it's, good. It's just a really organic open world game. It is. It's it's very pretty, with like rewarding curiosity, I would say, um, which seems to be Nintendo's thing between like that and Super Mario Odyssey, where it's not so much like what you find, it's the way you find it. Um, some, sort of every inch of it is just filled with, with stuff. Some cynical bastard at this table last last week or so said something <laughs> said something to me about Breath of the Wild, like not having. I, I can't remember your words. I should look them up and and uh, throw them back yeah. in your face about like there not being any uh, wonder or something in the game because well, once you find out really? everything ends in a shrine, it's no longer exciting. Uh, and I say. <laughs> Boo to that, sir. No. I think, okay. I disagree so hard. I know this is the PC Gamer show, so I just want to caveat our right. conversation by just, like, pointing. At, first of all, like, saying the PC modding scene for this game is amazing, so don't, like, discount what we're talking about. Also. Yeah, I, I, I get what the emulators are on about now. You can yeah. ride on Sonic now. You can, yes. You can do so many <laughs> disgusting and beautiful things in this game. But I will say, yeah, I think, um, I think there's a sort of a, a threshold once you know what, once you kind of learn the design of the game and like know what it's leading you towards, um, mm -hmm. because they're like, there's not bottomless mystery in that game, I'll say. There's mystery. You, you know what that's also true of, James? What? Life. Yeah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it. I think it's a very mysterious game for the first, like, God, 20 hours, which is like a good amount of wonder and mystery. That's a potent dose of wonder and mystery. But the, right. the back half of, well, excuse me, the back, like, 15 16ths of 
of my like 200 hours in that game or whatever is has been Dang. a lot of fun but also sort of just you know uh, i'm looking for shrines for I think even when right. there is a shrine at the end of it, usually whatever interesting, like the places that they built in that game or the unique yes. areas are totally like fascinating to me by themselves. Yeah, the, the it's, reward it's is just to go find like the the big sort of like main corners of the map and everything. Um, the shrines do get a little bit samey after a while, but it reminds me more than anything of a game that is on PC. Hey. Um, and some, I'm sure someone's going to slide me for saying this, but it reminds me of Dragon's Dogma um, after oh. the Dark Arisen DLC came out for it, where mainly because of, like, I guess the reason I want to explore. Um, like, in Fallout and stuff, I'm super fastidious about, like, uh, or, like, in, in Skyrim, um, of, like, finding every, you know, arrow or every bullet in a dungeon or in, like, a, a building. Um, but in, like, in, in Breath of the Wild and Dragon's Dogma, it's more of, like, what's at the end of an area. Um, it's less about like a stockpile of supplies or money. It's more about like a, a more impactful piece of gear, I guess. Like I'm, I'm motivated to explore because I want to gear up as opposed to I want to have a bigger number in my inventory. And that reminds me, that was something I really liked about Dragon's Dogma. And there's just, there's stuff everywhere to collect with food and herbs and like all kinds of crap. But there's like more sort of like every sort of long trek in a straight line is like punctuated with a, a big discovery outside of a shrine. Um, which keeps me kind of yeah like the checking corners i still find so much satisfaction in that game in just like climbing high spaces and just like having a really nice view of something yeah that's something that i'd never even in the witcher 3 is probably the only other open world game where i got kind of close to that but the witcher 3 mm -hmm. is still to me much more about the story and the the side mm -hmm. quests and stuff yeah and i would admire how beautiful the environment was but i wasn't mm -hmm. really seeking out vistas or right. kind of like distracted by just a site somewhere like i would yeah. be distracted by an event or a character or something mm -hmm. but in this game i'll just be like huh that crag looks interesting like let me spend 10 minutes just climbing yeah. running uh you know parish parasailing over to it and i think no yeah i i i i i i I'm walking back my statements from Slack because I'm a hyperbolic and uh, be, I and love I'm, this game. And I'm bullying you in public. But so. I also, I'm just like, uh, I'm, I'm so, when I play this game, I think of the PC a lot. Uh, Breath of the yeah. Wild for anyone just tuning it in. It is a PC-ass Zelda it's game for sure. PC as fuck. But, and I, yeah. I, I think it's going to be, so, oh, I'm so excited for, I don't know how long it's going to take three years or so for the next wave of open world games on the PC to take inspiration to, yeah. from it. because you're already seeing in tiny doses in Assassin's Creed uh, origins and Far Cry 5 they uh, there's an emphasis on uh, I guess your own sort of cartography and like seeing you know determining points of interest through uh, what you see in the world rather than yeah. a top-down map that has icons on it mm -hmm. uh, natural curiosity and uh, i don't know i think uh whatever started this first this round of open world games with icons just you know uh covering the entire thing whether it was a combination of assassin's creed and gta i don't know uh right. this is we're like on the cusp of something new yeah we're gonna have some good ass climbing exploration games i'm so excited yeah i think that'll be a good sort of like trend is we'll get away from all the icons and stuff and just move back so if you can see it you can go to it i look forward to that as well yes for a while that was like a really cliche sort of <laughs> right. pr talking point um mm -hmm. but i think a couple games like like breath of the wild and assassin's creed origins like actually not only did they make good on that as in a thing you can literally do yeah. but they made it mm -hmm. feel worthwhile which is the yeah which is the part that makes it cool because it's yeah. not just a oh that mountain is real geometry you can walk to it is like <laughs> all right whatever but that when you get up there it actually feels satisfying it's, it does right and it's there's pretty. stuff to do there once you get there like throw rocks down at uh <laughs> lizards cool uh anything else uh, you've been playing austin uh, nothing uh, not been playing the only thing other than that i did over the break was uh meet wes when he was in town for, for the holidays oh, yeah. we did do that so in atlanta in meat space right on we got some uh some like, mediterranean food kebabs some halal mm. some kebabs yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds so good and some, then, some uh, hummus chatted up in a bar and then some ice cream hey you got yeah. a cap off the night right it was right next to the Mediterranean place. Like, how can <laughs> yeah. you say no to Baskin Robbins? Back in Montana, yeah. I had nothing but like meat and potatoes for 
two two weeks. <laughs> I miss the food here. <laughs> it's good good food, but I'm glad to be back. How much of your what's your dad's favorite beer again? Hams. Hams. Uh, dude, he was hams. going hard. How many hams? He's like officially retired. <laughs> retired now. He doesn't know what to do with his time. And a brewery just opened up in town, so. Now he, he knows what to do with his time. He just goes there. He just spends three beers, comes home, naps, uh, talks about uh, the ducks he saw that day, and uh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> a life. I could that's be retired dream. I think right I could there. be content yeah. of that. Oh hell yeah, I'm down. Um, anyway, uh, let's let's move on from what we've been playing. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more in the coming months, but uh, to just some fresh news, uh, fresh off the news boat, and. I, right now, I don't have my remote like uh, scene switcher <laughs> working. We're, this is this this stage is a work in progress for those of you watching. So I'm gonna lean out. You know, if you didn't point it out, probably no one would even. Pay I ha attention. I'm just so so as the host <laughs> with the most. I gotta. I can't boast. <laughs> Here we go. Pow! Wow, that was dramatic. News. Woo. That was pretty. Uh, that's that's some smooth show running, if you ask me. Uh, two things I wanna I wanna go over. Guess what was announced today? New Total War. It's new Total War, and it's the new. This is not a new fantasy game th th that they've been stuck on those dang devs for not a, a while. Not a Warhammer mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Not a Warhammer game. This is the next mainline historical Total War, and it's Total War Three Kingdoms, uh, and that takes place in ancient China, uh, yep. 190 CE. So. Uh, as a person who's not familiar with the history of China and not too familiar with the history of Total War games, I, I don't know if this is exciting or not. Are people, are you guys getting the general idea that people are into uh, this? You know, I, I have kind of in the same boat. I want to hear from Total War fans. Me. Wes. Wes, uh, are you, are you yeah, a Total War fan? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I started playing the series with Shogun 2. Um, one of my good friends has been playing it since... Probably the you know the early games yeah. like uh, the original Rome or something like that. So he played through Empire and Shogun and Shogun Two, and that was about when I jumped in. And that's probably still my favorite in the series overall. Shogun Two is a really good game, uh, and Rome Two kind of blew out the yeah. scale a little too much. It had a lot of issues at launch that they, to their credit, they fixed most of them. Um, but it was still a really huge game, and Warhammer is a ton of fun. Uh, the factions are so creative and, and different. They play really differently. Um, but the historical Total War games, y you have to admire their dedication to the settings. Mm -hmm. And they really go out of their way to I integrate, uh, even though the games are mostly about combat, to integrate some kind of different political systems. To, you know, Rome politics, obviously very different than yeah. uh, classical Japanese politics, that kind of thing. Right. And this is the first time they've done a new, a really new setting, I think, in a pretty long time. Because they did um, some kind of small sequels to yeah. uh, to Rome and uh, Shogun had kind of a big DLC. But the, um, I'm, I'm trying to remember now what the, it wasn't Mongols, the... Um, the Rome to oh. uh, the the last one. It felt like kind of a, yeah, yeah. a gap game. It wasn't like a huge big change. This feels like I'm gonna be a more significant um, new Total War game to me. So I, I haven't even watched the trailer yet, actually. But it's I'm I'm pretty excited for it. I think it's gonna play differently than than Rome, probably a little more like Shogun, but cool. has more distinct factions. Uh, I, I'm really curious what kind of the size of the world map is going to be, how the political stuff is going to work. Cool. But it's a new time period for Total War. So I think that's pretty... That's, a lot to be excited about awesome. for the historical fans. All right. Cool. Uh, elsewise, elsewheres, elsewhats in news, uh, Destiny 2... Uh, recently finished up its dawning event. Austin, did you do any of that stuff? I did not. I did absolutely none of that stuff. Neither did I. I kind of <laughs> fell. Off, I kind of fell off the Destiny boat. I think uh, yeah. for a little bit. Um, but uh, just as this holiday event is wrapping up, there's another on the way, leaked through uh, some data mining, and it's the Crimson Days event. Uh, previously, this event was accompanied by a two-player, like a, a duos mode, right? Like. Um, yeah. Uh, with sort of an interesting mechanic where if a player was downed 
on one team, the other player would then receive a buff of some kind. Um, uh, it's not confirmed whether that mode is coming back or not or what's going to be in this, but this was officially acknowledged by one of the community managers, so it's on the way. Uh, if you're still playing Destiny 2 and you still uh, the Eververse hasn't ruined your your life and love for that game, then <laughs> you got more stuff coming, I guess. Uh, personally, I don't know. That dawning event really soured me, but uh, yeah, that was a that left a bad taste in the mouth. Um, Crimson Days was fun before. Like duos is, I think, an underrated format for yeah. for shooters. Um, it's like it feels less special now that Destiny Two is a four before because it's like we cut the teams in half, whereas six v six was like a, a bigger departure. Yes. Um, but like picking a battle buddy is still fun, and if the rewards are cool, it'll it, maybe I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, yeah. But it, it seems, from what we've seen so far, it looks like there's a lot of loot boxes with this event. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh boy, that, uh, that's not really going to pull me back in after the dawning. Definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it when it's officially, officially revealed and everything. Yeah, at the very least, I hope for a new mode that sticks around. Right. That's you know, we need more variety in that game. Uh, so that's it for the news. Uh, our first topic, though, there's still there's still more news to come, but happening this week in good old Las Vegas is the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, <laughs> historically uh, known for just big TVs. I am big TVs. so happy I am not at the Consumer Electronics Show right now. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, there's some cool stuff happening. Yeah, um, but CES is the, the worst convention to cover. Why is this, in, Wes? In my experience. I haven't been to Gamescom, which is uh, the European nightmare of... Uh, a bajillion people being in this uh, one convention space, yeah. but CES is typically overcrowded. It's in a giant convention center, so it takes forever to get from one place to another. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when you go outside, it's Vegas air, and so by the end of a mm. week, you're like, either you've been smelling cigarette smoke just constantly, <laughs> or the the desert has sucked all the moisture out of your body, mm. uh, and you're just you're just uh, it's just desiccated. It's just not. And then half of CES is like phone cases and Bluetooth speakers and just like the most boring, generic <laughs> shit year after year. <laughs> I like phone cases. What's new in phone case tech? Um, they fit your phone better. Oh, good. Great. Yeah, uh, they, they probably don't. I mean, well, okay. But there's always a few cool things uh, at the show. A lot of times the companies will show up with like, when I went like five years ago, it yeah. was like they had an 8K, somebody had an 8K TV oh, five years damn. ago. That TV right. was never going to be an actual product no. it took like four mm. hdmi cables to run you know picture <laughs> to it or something hot damn uh so there's always some just you know super prototypey stuff that's just for show that's never going to be real but then there's some stuff that's like okay this is going to come out later this year and it's going to be legit cool. and i think one of the big ones this year is uh nvidia announced their bfgd what does that stand for uh initiative i think it's big format gaming displays but uh that's yeah this is maybe the first time i can think of a company using <laughs> some like gamer <laughs> vernacular <Right. laughs> that, that doesn't make me totally cringe i was kind of yeah. like a okay, bit on the nose i like but... it um, yeah. So basically, NVIDIA is partnering with um, some some tech companies. Uh, I don't want to say display companies. I'm not sure exactly what the arrangement is here. Um, mm -hmm. But some companies like Acer and Asus are going to be making essentially gaming TVs, but they're kind of yeah. they're kind of marketing this as like a hybrid between a monitor and a TV, I guess. Hmm. But they're 4K mm -hmm. displays. Damn. They're 65 inches. Okay. So that is a, I guess a, a, these days that's like a standard size for a big TV. Yeah, I was gonna say right. what you said so far sounds par for the course. Like I have, I think I have a sixty-inch TV, which yeah. is pretty good size for my living room. Yeah, sixty-five, great size TV. Eighty is kind of like the higher end. Eighty, ninety are like as as big as they get. Uh, yeah, kind of as normal these these days. Sixty-five inches, rather large for your desk, I would say. Not too many people have a desk set yeah, up. I'm not going to be. It would accommodate that. Right in a report. I have a hard time finding like a dual monitor mount for that. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but they're they're 4K. They do HDR. They're 120 hertz displays. They're going to have Nvidia's Shield tech built in. Right. 
um, which makes me wonder if they're going to be doing more with that at mm. some point because it's been like three years since they had their shield um, home home mm-hmm. uh, streaming box yes. thing and the shield tablet and stuff, which is basically what the Nintendo Switch is. Fun fact: <laughs> the shield much. tablet. Uh, so I'm wondering if they're going to have some updates on that. Uh, the Shield TV and whatnot, but yeah, they're basically making some big ass G-Sync enabled gaming TVs. I mean, uh, th- yeah. that's sort of been obviously. I'm not going to be able to afford this, and they're going to be expensive, probably. Yeah, we don't know the price, we don't know availability, anything like that. But uh, I think what bothers me most about playing, uh, hooking up my PC to my home TV is that the refresh rate is so low, and when mm-hmm. I go from, uh, yep. you know, a work monitor that has, you know, uh, I think I'm at 144, and it's just like butter to go from that to very just just kind of cho- it feels choppy, especially on such a big mm-hmm. display. It's maybe exaggerated a bit, but uh, I think this is a uh, for enthusiasts, hardcore enthusiasts. For now, this is probably exciting news yeah yeah so they're coming out later this year apparently they haven't said anything about pricing they will probably be two grand or more yeah i would guess um i think two is pretty generous yeah (laughs) yeah, maybe maybe three two and a half you you don't see a lot of high refresh rates on 4k that's uh, that to me is like the big selling point yeah Yeah. is because it's really hard to find a high refresh rate on 4k um, and prices for 4K in general are coming down yeah. for sure. Yeah. And and HDR is no longer like you can only get it in the top end models, you know. But the that 120 hertz refresh is going to be uh, the the big selling point for cool. this for a TV, right. I think. Um, one thing that might help with the price a little bit is all of these because they're all going to be 65 inches they're all definitely using the same panel Mm. so that should at least mean they can ramp up production on that pretty high it's not going to be like a big competitive thing where different tvs are using different panels and they all have to do their own manufacturing it's very much going to be we're using this display different companies are kind of going to do different um frames for it and sure, sure. presentation but cool that's exciting uh one more big well one good announcement i think from ces for another enthusiast one is there's a new vive headset coming out it's called the vive pro vr headset uh and the big improvement this time around is resolution and if you've used vr austin have you used vr Okay, you've used VR West. Yeah, I know what you're talking yep. about. There's a screen door effect from the resolution, the low, relatively low resolution compared to maybe the displays you're used to or your phone. Right. Because uh, you're putting this thing right next to your eye, you're going to see you know, the, the pixels, uh, essentially, yeah. and the way the screen is manufactured. Uh, because the resolution is so high, uh, it's 20... 80 or excuse me 2880 by 1600 that's a 1440 by 1600 per eye approximately uh that's a 78 percent increase over the previous vive and rift relatively uh tuan who tried it for us uh he said the screen door effect is still there yeah but very but minimal very minimal he said big difference right big difference so uh along with an improved headband you know, better headphones, integrated headphones. It, it sounds good. It sounds like mm-hmm. nice improvements. Do you think this is going to change anything for uh hmm, I think it's going to change, like, a good bit for one of, like, the two VR markets, which is the people who can't afford VR. There you um, go. So it's good news for them. They have a better screen. They have clearer visuals. But it's, it's obviously not going to do – I think it's going to do good stuff for Vive, um, but not good stuff for VR where it's – Still, it's you know bigger screen, bigger price. Um, it's like we're expecting it to be like eight hundred, right, for the new one. Yeah, uh, well, that's that's my guess is at minimum eight hundred, maybe a yeah, thousand. Right. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're, so it's like we're having still some, very much, uh, some um, visual stuttering yeah, on just, the feed. If you notice that, we're we're aware of it. Um, oh, are we? Your oh, okay. your feed is fine, Austin. It's so, I think our, so new, <laughs> our new webcam setup. I think is yeah, we, some... we plugged in a new webcam, and it's uh, it's apparently not very happy at the moment. So, uh, gotcha. Uh, uh, what do you say um, we should we should we take a, a minute and fix that? We might need to reset the feed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, sit tight. We will be back in just a minute. Quick intermission.
trying to evaluate like 10 seconds ago, but I think right. it's right. Cool. I think we're good again. Uh, that's a new technical difficulty we're having. We're live, I think. I think we're live. It's a feature of the PC Gamer Show. <laughs> you know, I yeah. One day soon, we will have a stable. <laughs> Don't say uh, soon. Oh, God. Not going to work. Hey, at least we got a new fucking table. You can, what's, what can go wrong with new this background. table? It's a nice table. It's a Quality. nice table. Um, uh, nice background. It's nice foam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we were talking about the Vive. The Vive. Vive Pro. Pro. So I think uh, it's definitely a a plus in that it is pushing the hardware forward. Yes. And the only way this kind of high end hardware becomes affordable is you have to make it make enough of it that it gets cheaper to make it, build a market right. for it, sell it, and the Vive and the Oculus both started out at like eight hundred bucks. You know, the Oculus is now like three fifty, four hundred dollars. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. become much more affordable. The only way something like the Vive Pro with a new higher end display is going to become affordable is for them to put it out there and let that technology become more profitable for them. So it's good yeah. in that sense. I don't think this is going to expand the VR market no. significantly right. at all. It's going to be a few right. people who went, okay, I'll finally buy in because I was waiting for that second generation. And it'll be a few people who just have a ton of money who go, well, I have one already, but this sounds better, so I'll buy a new sure. one. Right. But it's not going to be the big expansion that you know it'll take to make VR mainstream or something like that. So right good, right. but not, uh, not going to make a huge difference. Cool. Well, that's exciting. Uh, those are the two big bullet points from CES so far, but uh, there's still a couple days left, yeah? Yeah, a couple more days. Yeah, um, so. Razer has a new uh, Mamba wireless mouse Ooh. that they took an interesting uh, tactic with. So a lot of companies are doing wireless charging now where you just have, mm -hmm. you do like the magnetic field technology. There's a little puck in the mouse that connects to a mouse pad. Yeah, yeah. You plug the mouse pad in and that'll charge the mouse. Uh, so Razer with their new Mamba actually took the battery out of the mouse. There's no battery in it. So it's okay. not charging wirelessly. It's just holding a connection, oh. a constant charge. Uh, oh, okay. wirelessly so maybe there's like a tiny battery or something in there but it, but it basically right. has to stay on the mouse pad to work to huh. function uh, but as a result it's like a 95 gram wireless mouse which is very light that's yeah. about as light as mice get some of them drop in the, right. the, the 80s if they're uh, wired and very 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 light uh, so that's 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 a cool way to cut some some weight out of the thing. You're gonna have to have the wireless mouse pad, obviously, for it to work. Uh, the, the wireless charging mouse pad. So it's right. a very specific setup. It's not something that you would take with you probably anywhere because you need to plug your mouse pad in and have it mm -hmm. set and and sturdy and all. But it's a it's a cool idea. Uh, that's exciting to me. Yeah. I'm sure we'll see. Uh some more stuff later this week uh you can head to our our website pcgamer.com and slash hardware slash hardware to see all of the stuff coming out of ces currently ces has no power yeah <laughs> power maybe, outage. maybe yeah, it's back up right now wrong things. <laughs> uh yeah i mean like uh at least we still have power here um but yeah ces it's exciting i suppose uh, you know what's more exciting is video games, the things that you Hell yeah. play. Uh, a game I played before break but recently wrote up was a game. Let me tell tell me if you've heard about this game or had heard about it prior to uh, maybe me bringing it up. Kingdom Come Deliverance, anyone? Let me change the subject here. I've definitely heard of Kingdom Come Deliverance. Let me give you the, the elevator pitch for what I think it is. Uh, extremely technical immersive sim question mark in uh <laughs> medieval europe yeah. combat pretty pretty much nailed it it's a uh, first person historical rpg at a glance you might think this is skyrim because first person melee combat pretty vistas a lot of castles and, and you know that kind of uh, and monks and familiar kind of trappings of fantasy but you know the actual or at least as approximated as it can be the 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 historical versions of these in a digital form uh this this comes from warhorse studios and 
this was originally a Kickstarter project that has been delayed a few years by this mm-hmm. point. It was projected December 2015, yeah. apparently, so yeah. about two years old, two, uh, two years late now. Yeah, uh, I, I think for good reason, or at least hopefully for good reason, because there's a lot going on in this game. Uh, and speaking to uh, some of the devs, they've expanded. Uh, their studio has expanded by a significant amount in that time. Uh, and uh, so the scope of the game kind of also changed with it. Um, yeah, uh, first-person uh, RPG in, in, in Bohemia, 1400s Bohemia. And you play, and this is, I think, the thing I latched on to immediately. You don't play a hero exactly. You play the son of a blacksmith who uh, his village gets attacked and uh, his family is killed and his a family heirloom is stolen a sword and he's just like I don't have anything to live for so I'm going to try and get that back uh, because that is like it, it's all that means anything to me and a kindly lord and this is the greatest bending of the truth uh, says okay you can be a soldier now uh, you can work you know fight for me which is Typically something that would not happen. You kind of were in your class and you stayed there. But you're still kind of just one of the grunts. Yeah, you're a grunt. Um, And that's reflected in a lot of interesting ways. And I think, uh, you know, when when you play Skyrim or something that appears similar to this kind of game, there's sort of an inherent, like, power fantasy that comes with it. It's like you're you're going to start on this slope that uh, where you maybe have very little and then you hit... Five hours in, you start unlocking points on your skill tree, and you just like the gains and, and your abilities just multiply from there. This is imagine starting even further below that. In this game, <laughs> you have to learn to bandage yourself before you can heal yourself in battle. So you might just get cut open in battle, and you might have the materials to bandage just yourself, bleed out, but you won't know how to do it. <laughs> so you cannot. Uh, <laughs> there's a quest line. Uh, in which you have to find, and I, I, lo- I love this quest line overall. There's videos of it online that I, um, on the devs' website that go into more depth. But you have to find a murderer in a monastery, uh, and there's all these new initiates in the monastery, um, and the murderer is one of them. Uh, and so you have to become a monk, and it's, it's very like in the name of the rose kind of yeah. inspired, which is cool. Yeah, so y- you know a guy because like you can't just become a monk right away you know a guy so you kind of bend the rules and get in but from there on you cannot leave the monastery and you have to live the life of a monk like on a real-time schedule not not real-time real-time but uh you know according to this game's day and night cycle so you have to you get a schedule to begin with you have to do like morning prayers you have to be in the mess hall to eat you have to you know uh maybe do some hymns or uh uh, you might be scheduled to make some potions or whatever, and you have to show up to these places uh, on time. The the catch is that you can't read either <laughs> because <laughs> you're your lower class, uh, you know, uh, medieval Bohemia. So you essentially, and I, it, it it was not told to me how you go about learning to read or learning to decipher your schedule. They just kind of jumped me ahead and said, you, you know, you'll figure it out on your own. Uh, but yeah, you have to. Wow, you know, you, that, you're truly kind of role playing this this low class, uneducated guy. It's like a that's a dedication to subterfuge that yeah. I can't think of any like full on stealth <laughs> games really replicating, or you know, something like mm-hmm. Hitman. Like you get the chef's disguise to get into the manor or whatever. But like, do you really do? D- does Hitman at any point? I, I haven't played much of the series. Like, let you kind of fake the professions that you're doing definitely not you can like stand at a table and like chop stuff up or something like if you're yeah hitman was my first thought too but it never goes really that deep Mm -hmm. yeah and this is this may be just be a one-off quest but it is at least if you fail and like you fail to perform your duties and get kicked out the quest will not end you will still like have to find this murderer or have the opportunity to just kill all those monks, and you could just kill all the monks. Uh, <laughs> that probably like will have consequences, but uh, that's an option. You probably wouldn't be real popular no. ever after that. No, I don't think you could return to that place. But I, I don't know. I just kind of that really stood out to me as like a, a nice gem of a quest, and, and, and sort of exemplifies the dedication to role playing this this character. There, uh, the other thing that really stands out to me is. Uh, sort of the battle system and and hit detection so 
I know you wrote a thing a few, maybe a year or two ago, Wes, about The Witcher 3's like armor system and how you mm. really liked visually. Visually, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this is this gets close to it visually because I think it shares a lot of the same styles. Um, yeah, I wrote about how the The Witcher 3 is. I want to say really the first game that I can think of, or at least definitely the one that made the greatest impression on me of it feeling like the characters were actually wearing these clothes yeah. rather than the clothes being just part of their character model. Like they had enough right. thickness and like layers and pieces to them that it felt like just something they were, that had on top of their body yes. rather than their body is the clothing. Yeah, and so I, I think... This game reminded me of it, Kingdom Come Deliverance, for those of you just tuning in, because, first of all, visually, it, they, it appears layered, and and when you switch out items, the, uh, there's not, like, uh, you know, one layer poking through another, and, and it doesn't feel like it's just bending around like a, a rigid character model. Uh, it feels like, you know, it looks like clothing. I think it carries that depth uh, mechanically and systemically too, because you have 14 slots for clothing and armor, all of which you can layer and match That's like, a lot. however you like. So yeah. that might be a turnoff for a lot of people because inventory systems are, you know, they're they're you're in the menus and you're dinking around with stuff. It takes a long right. time, a lot of numbers and small text. Uh, I admire this because not only do these you know 14 slots change your stats in unique ways but each material uh, responds to uh, each weapon type ac accordingly um, and realistically and by that I mean uh, you could be wearing uh, plates you know maybe on your chest and on your thigh or maybe all over um, but it, you know, at some point you, you need to be able to bend your your, your arms, and so there are small mm -hmm. gaps in in the armor, even if it is full armor. If you happen to pierce that with an arrow, it's going to behave. If you happen to nail the spot between the plates, y you could bleed out and die, like right away. It, it could be a critical mm -hmm. hit. So it doesn't matter if you're facing like this big berserker type you might typically encounter in a game. If you have good aim or you play smart, you can. Just take them out as easy as anyone. That's a challenge. That's a small hitbox. Uh, another example is like if you have a visor with tiny slits in it. Uh, if you just manage to poke a guy in the face once or twice, you know through those through the visor, they're done for. Um, like how often are combat systems that? That's pretty rad. Yeah. That's pretty rad. Uh, yeah. Pretty challenging. Uh, and there's a whole stamina management system and like a, almost a four honor style directional. Uh, counter and and you know uh, aim system for all of these different weapons, but there's there's just a level of detail there that will turn off so many people. <laughs> that but the, but the people who like it, but yeah, but the people who really like, it like it are losing their yeah. mind over this kind of thing, and so right. like that's extremely exciting to me. Maybe not from like a casual playtime standpoint, but. Um, mm. 70 hours in, you're going to be like, I finally have... I finally understand the armor system. Yeah, I finally have yeah. 14 pieces of good armor and yeah. know how to stab dudes in exactly. the elbow. Not only that, your armor and clothes will degrade, and like if you get into a battle, they'll become dirty and mm -hmm. and bloody, and if you don't wash them or take care of them, people will just like turn you away and, and won't... Really finally a game where I can do laundry. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we all been waiting for. Uh, I hope that that has real, uh, like, real repercussions and doesn't isn't just like a convenient back of the box quote. Because I remember right. uh, in the original Dragon Age, yes. just laughing hysterically, like watching one of my friends play it, where you would go out and do a battle and in Dragon Age like your characters would just be covered head to toe <laughs> gore in gore within yeah. seconds like yep, yep. 10 seconds you stab like a pig and it's just blood drenching yeah, you yeah. and then you go in a conversation and your character is just like entire <laughs> face is just coated in blood what's and up it, Greg and it's, it's just like yeah. oh yeah I got those uh, got those apples you wanted oh thanks buddy see you later uh, yeah uh, that's not the case in this game, and I mean it, it goes further. You guys mentioned Hitman. If you wear the clothes of a noble, or wear the clothes, or which are difficult to get in this game, and by no means can you just find them. Well, maybe you can. Maybe you can just uh, kill a noble. I mean, that's what the thing is. You can kill a noble. You can uh, kill a beggar, or you can feasibly knock them out and steal their clothes and dump them in the woods. Uh, 
people will treat you accordingly to how you're dressed too. And that, that carries over to different factions. So if you want to infiltrate an enemy fort, uh, one option is go under cover of night and sneak around and you, you can like poison their chili and the next day in the battle they might be uh, weaker or have worse stamina or one or two or will die. Shitting themselves. Exactly. Or <laughs> you can like find the guy taking a pee or who's like maybe the scout, uh, you know, walking the perimeter of camp. You can kill him, knock him out, steal his clothes. And the more items of that faction you're wearing, the less likely you are to be detected or like as an imposter uh there's there's sometimes like other checks they might like be uh turkish or something and you have to speak their language mm -hmm. and there's a skill check wow. there to go along with it wow. um but if you've been doing things that in the game that you know up your charisma or speech or whatever that associated stat is then you might be safe but so kingdom comes out in a month yeah that's what surprised me the most i was this is a really interesting looking game it's probably a year off uh, no, it's out February thirteenth, I believe. Uh, mm. It's it looks just like the, it, a quintessential kind of PC game. Ridiculous attention to detail. And... From what you got to play, did it feel ready or did it feel buggy uh, or? It didn't I didn't see any overt bugs. What I played were very much like um, it felt like uh, curated slices of the game. Yeah. Right. Uh, that no doubt they've been hammering so, it away yeah, at a, probably for a while. Pretty, pretty polished segments. But I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like we've approached with like maybe The Witcher Three initially with the same skepticism. Like this is really ambitious, and the previous games these people have made maybe don't match up to what its ambition kind of says <laughs> it's trying to be. And I, I, I'm erring on the side of. Uh, hope. hope rather than it being just a total mess because everything there is I, I mean it, the attention to detail is such that like if they were to just release it in a buggy state um, or a super mm -hmm. buggy state it it would be a disaster um, and I don't think these super complex games can really afford to arrive broken uh, sort of mm -hmm. some of their brokenness is like inherent to the stack layer yeah, I systems think, but... uh, like for sure if it's if it's really buggy if it's crashing all the time that's if what there's I mean. things that just yeah. don't work obviously that's going to be a big problem but yeah. i think there yeah. is a definitely a degree of jankiness that is more acceptable yeah. in those kind of like really ambitious open games uh right. than in something more polished and linear like Oh, our, uh, our lights just dim Yeah, here. that's the other catch about right. this room is we have a, a motion, sensor. motion sensor blocked by a shelf at the moment. Work in progress, everybody. Work in progress. But yeah, uh, it's a cool looking game. Uh, we'll be sure to be writing about it and, and playing it and uh, have a review and, and the typical things we do accompanying the launch of big things that you, you might like. You know what the uh, what you're you talking about actually reminded me of yeah. the most recent, I believe, update to Dwarf Fortress, Ooh. which I think is in the game now, but it has at least been discussed on yes. the, the blog. It has a, a whole system where uh, every you can you can adopt a fake name, a persona, right. and every interaction you have with characters at that point, like. Uh, you can do that for one of your elves or not one of your dwarves rather. right every interaction they have um the thing this is for the adventure mode at that point people will just associate that name with you and then you can just start going by your own name or huh. a different name and all of the conversations and all of the th actions you've done and everything under that name people will right. only know of in that name which is huh. like a level of simulating reality that most yeah. games wouldn't go to because it's just too hard too complicated <laughs> but yeah. like james if you just went to minneapolis and you were like i'm doug and then you became really famous <laughs> in minneapolis and then you just came back to california and you were like i'm james <laughs> nobody would fucking know about all that stuff you did as doug back oh there. my god it makes me wonder if you like get caught you know someone identifies you as both I, I think there are ways for that okay. to happen, but I, I haven't played it myself. So Dwarf I'm Fortress, the key is still going. I'm, st I'm still in love with the idea of Dwarf Fortress in, in yeah, all yeah. ways, and I can't wait for it to never be finished. Cause it's, <laughs> it, it can't ever be finished. I hope it just keeps going and surpasses reality. Uh, final, final topic of the day. Uh, so, Opus Magnum, it's this interesting. Mm -hmm. 
is it puzzle, is it puzzle alchemy game? based what is it do you know what, exactly what the yeah it's a it's a puzzle game um where you build these alchemy machines so you have inputs and outputs basically and there's like basically like these hexagonal tiles and as stuff like passes over these tiles it'll turn into something else or combine with something else and you have these little like grabbers which move stuff um so you build these machines you basically like program them with sort of input so like mm -hmm. rotate in this direction grab this and stuff like that and then you just try and build either like the fastest machine or the most efficient machine in terms of like the least sort of work done um the least parts used and stuff like that um, and that to me is like the magic of Opus Magnum is it makes programming fun. And I say that as someone who's not a programmer. <laughs> yeah. And we, uh, we liked it a lot. Our reviewer gave it like a 91. Yeah. Which it was is... like a 91. It was one of our top uh, reviewed games last year. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. It had a built in, I, I believe tool to like output gifts of your machine, ah, perfect. which was a brilliant yeah. idea. Cause you'd see yeah. on, it was fun watching some people on Twitter as they were learning the game, mm -hmm. like post kind of a machine where it's like the arm would rotate rotate you know 180 degrees and pick a yeah. thing up and then move it over here and then slide it down and then mm -hmm. a week later they're tweeting a thing with like 74 moving <laughs> pieces in this like insanely yeah. elaborate sequence perpetual like, motion machines. yeah it's just like yeah okay, it's re really cool to see that progression yeah yeah it, it yep. looks amazing but it's not amazing enough for gog and so you wrote this new story austin can you kind of talk us through what exactly happened here yeah so uh, a few days ago, um, the creator, Zach Barth, who is um, Zachtronics, he made he made Opus Magnum and a couple other puzzle games. It's kind of his thing. Um, I think the maybe the most known one outside of Opus Magnum is Infinifactory, ah, yeah, it's a good um, which is like a conveyor belt puzzle game, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of people were asking him, like, hey, why isn't Opus Magnum on GOG? Um, and he, he reached out to GOG to get a publicly like releasable statement, which he put on Twitter. Um, and basically, it was a statement from GOG, which we we reached out and confirmed with them um, as legitimate, uh, saying basically uh, Opus Magnum did not pass our internal curation process. And then they gave a little bit more detail, um, basically saying uh, we consider many other factors than just the actual game. We do it from the entire like the angle of our entire user base. And what's funny is the name dropped uh, PC Gamer saying the reviews we do aren't uh, objective game reviews like what PC Gamer does. Um, which Tyler uh, pointed out in no a comment. Thing. Our reviews, yeah, it's like our reviews aren't, yeah, like, I get what they mean, right? Like they look at it as a product on our shelf. We look at it, how fun our game is. I get what they mean, but our reviews aren't you know, objective. They're sort of by nature. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was the, the story is that at Opus Magnum, really popular, really acclaimed game, um, rejected by GOG. And it sparked this conversation over um, how these types of storefronts are curated. So like on one hand, at one end of the spectrum is GOG, who, with this sort of incident, has kind of convinced people is very strict with what's allowed on there. Um, and what's interesting, as some people pointed out, is that uh, Zatronic's other games, a lot of them are on GOG, like Infinifactory. Um, and then on the very far end, we have uh, Steam, which, you know, a bazillion games came out on Steam last year, and like 95% of them were crap. Um, <laughs> we see so much, like, garbage meme games clogging the Steam storefront because stuff like Steam Direct just doesn't have a has a really wide filter so stuff like that slips through um so it's like is it you know is a system like that preferable where we get everything um or would you rather have a system where like maybe we miss a gem like opus magna but we have a, a stricter sort of bar there um so that's kind of become the conversation as a result of that and what do you think the right way is like wh what what do we take from maybe not this specific instance because i think personally i think it's just mystifying why this game isn't you know good enough, right or, but it, it makes me very curious like what the criteria was yeah. or the reasoning mm -hmm. for why it did not pass muster to them so then yeah. wh what is the what's the, what's the solution austin what's what do we do what 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 do game fronts storefronts do yeah i guess like it's it's kind of a boring answer is like to look for a <laughs> middle ground <laughs> uh, compromise <laughs> yeah basically where it's like but and then in this i'd be like curious to know um what other games were in this situation that didn't get yeah. you know, this sort of like coverage around them. Um, what other like we consider really good games weren't on GOG uh, for this for this same reason they didn't pass the curation process. Um, but GOG wasn't uh, particularly eager to comment further on it, so I don't think we'll get an answer from them. But yeah, looking just like as to how you want to curate things, um, I guess it, it kind of points to like the advantages and pitfalls of automated versus an actual human uh, curator. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, at the very least, I think uh, transparency across all storefronts in, in the 
for whatever their process might be is is important because as a creator if i was a creator mm -hmm. if i was making a game uh you know i would want to know if i'm spending my money my you know and and making something that's going to be able to even appear on a storefront to begin with and mm -hmm. uh, i don't know i think gog is putting itself at risk through this particular instance and, and maybe further by saying whatever we feel like is whatever we want mm -hmm. um right i think uh, it would be like a a powerful weapon um for, for any devs prospective developers to know what those criteria are um so i think that's a good idea is like because then that, like, they can start be planning on where they're gonna put this game after release um and it's i guess it would be easy uh like because there's there's so many you know unknowns with with opus magnum we don't know exactly why it's not there why it's why it was rejected but I think it's easy for for some developers to look at that and be like, well, if Opus Magnum can't get on GOG, then you know, what chance do I have? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's a, that's a potentially you know sort of downfall of a situation like this, but that's more of a result of ambiguity than anything. Yeah, and transparency makes you back up your your rules, right? Or makes mm -hmm. you back up your your claims as to what you know what your your rules are for your store, or what your your criteria are, or whatever. Same, right? The kind of thing like we've seen with uh twitter for example yeah is <laughs> yeah there, there are all these like people who go after twitter uh, mm -hmm. saying you know why don't you ban all the nazis from twitter and like they you yeah. know why did this person like sending me depth death threats uh why did this tweet you know not why was this not considered you know inappropriate behavior or whatever mm -hmm. and they have to refer back to their rules and then they say well based on our rules blah 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 and that has been a a way people mm -hmm. have kind of eviscerated Twitter's rules. Yeah. It's like whenever they fall back on that, inevitably they have a very like shaky leg to stand on based right. on kind of the vagueness of their rules and and their kind of sliding justifications for them. So the more transparent you are and the more robust your criteria, your rules, whatever they are, the more mm -hmm. satisfying that answer is when yeah. when people say what are you doing <laughs> what the hell is this uh yeah it'll be interesting going forward because i don't think uh i think all these storefronts are still like we're gonna see a major change in how they curate and 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 present the many many games coming out uh right in, in particular like what steam's ui does it because because we know this right. ui update is still happening uh does gog you know against that do they become more transparent and try to be sort of a more prestige platform and you know uh, mm -hmm. how these how these uh, storefronts are going to carve out their identities is going to be real interesting hopefully it's not by just introducing more clients because i'm so sick of fucking clients there's so many desktop clients yeah <laughs> gog galaxy uh, yeah. is pretty nice though. it is good it is good yeah. it's good i like the plat i like it gog. Is, it is good. the platform is nice and the drm free stuff and but, uh, and I, I appreciate the, you know, I would still be fine if GOG was all old games. That's probably not a great business model. Mm -hmm. There's a reason. Anymore. There's a yeah. reason they're selling, you know, newer games. Run out of them. Um, right. <laughs> but every time that they still re-release something that, you know, isn't on Steam yet and an older, an older shooter, an older anything, I'm just like, I'm happy that mm -hmm. they are around and putting time and resources and money into doing that. Yeah. Because it, that is a a tough thing to navigate all of those weird right. like licensing issues with companies yeah. that have gone bankrupt and who owns the rights to this and how do we re-release it and how do we set up you know an emulator like DOSBox correctly to run this game mm -hmm. so that it's not a pain in the ass like that stuff takes a lot of work yeah. so yeah. i'm glad they're still doing yeah. that i and that, agree and that, and that service you know really distinguishes gog as a storefront um and like, like you said wes uh, if they were to become more transparent about this process it would kind of put pressure on them to back it up but it could also be another, another good way for them to separate themselves from steam um who doesn't have who also doesn't have a great sort of uh transparency with in terms of what is and is not accepted on steam so cool i'm looking forward to uh, 2018 when all of this is sorted and figured out. Yeah, I think this is where we solve Completely. all problems with PC gaming, Everything. right? Everything. Fix it all up. Uh, no, we're doomed. We're doomed. Um, Should we do some questions? Let's do some questions. It's time for the for Twitch chat Q&A. Some Q uh, and also, should we, do the, should we do the answers too? I guess we'll answer them. We can just read the questions. Yeah. 
Just let him hang there. To answer That's good TV, right? <laughs> That's good TV. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're starting off the uh, questions with questions from our Discord, our club Discord, PC Gamer mm-hmm. Club Discord. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, you can go to, what is it? Is it PCGamerClub.com? Or no, PCGamer.com slash club. There you go. Gosh, it's been a long break. I couldn't remember my social security number and uh, my my. Uh, this is not related at all, but uh, my memory is failing me because I my traveling to Montana and spending a bunch of money and then coming back, um, they locked my credit card, thinking, "Who's this guy mm-hmm. in Montana?" And yeah. I could not Dog. remember my. Uh, <laughs> my social security number would uh when the fraud i was talking to the fraud lady she's like okay to prove this is you what's your social social security i'm like i could not remember it and so i was like wait uh let me be uh uh, be right back and i sounded like the most suspicious idiot (laughs) (laughs) ruffling through drawers looking for it like hang on i have to wake him up and ask it eventually came to me and i did prove myself point is you can go to pcgamer.com club to uh learn about our monthly subscription service which uh gives you an ad-free experience on the site it gives you access to our uh, club discord which is just a good time there's a lot of people in there it's growing all the time uh siege has recently taken over uh rainbow six siege so that's the game to play uh not under siege the steven seagal under, movie that's not, definitely not that uh you get a digital subscription to the magazine you get a free game each month and whatever beta keys we you know get enough of we'll throw your way first uh, you also get tub gear wallpaper, so that's that's a good thing. Um, most of all, you get to hang out with us. Uh, yeah. Your questions get answered here first. Uh, but if you have questions, tag PC Gamer in Twitch chat, and we'll, we'll, if we have time, we'll answer those as well. Uh, starting off here, uh, Nick Manley, 1987, asks, uh, could all the people in the stream briefly go through one of their most anticipated games for this year? So that means you two. What are you looking forward to? So, like, a game that's coming out... In 2018. In the future. In 2018. What are you looking forward to? 2018. Austin, you want to go first? Yeah, easy one for me. Um, it's still Monster Hunter World. Even after the, the recently announced delay, we're getting it... We're, we're hopefully getting it in fall, they said. Um, and we had some more news on that come up today about explaining it. And it's, you know, it's, it's the good the good delay we want to get it right and all that um i guess technically but, it's not a delay because they had never said when it right was they never said pc it but um, it's just like the console version is out in what three weeks or something uh what is today yeah like two weeks the 26 it's coming out on ps4 and xbox Damn. one so which gives me enough time to like play it to death and then by the time we get it on pc i'll be ready to probably do it again <laughs> destiny 2 all over again yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna I'll give you two. All right, one vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of like oh, an yeah. action RPG murder mystery kind of mm-hmm. from, uh, f- game from uh, Don't Nod, Don't Nod, who made um, mm-hmm. Life is Strange. Yeah, and, yeah. And before that, they made a uh, kind of like a cyberpunk action game called Remember Me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. what we've seen yeah, of Vampire yeah. looks pretty cool. You're playing as a I think you're a doctor mm-hmm. who is a vampire, and the setting mm-hmm. looks pretty pretty morbid a lot of people die into the plague and it's you know i'm into it i guess 18 maybe not 1800s 1500s i don't don't know know. um i I forget the setting offhand but it's in the past it looks very Mm -hmm. gothic and Mm. uh yeah interesting like there are dialogue options it definitely has that rpg flavor but then you can go around fucking dudes up as a vampire yeah and i you know i i I try i'm trying to stay away from reading about this game which is hard in our position because that's what we do but it's it's so intriguing to me like i i read a snippet and i'm probably paraphrasing and and destroying it but i think you can turn just about any main character into a vampire that's like one of the big rpg systems mm. who you turn and, seen, and why uh, yeah i seem to remember that somewhere we can kind of have these these i don't know if they're minions to you or not but yeah. you can sort of expand your brood as it were i think there's a vampire word for that that i don't know i don't know it either cool uh but second not a game that has been announced in any actual shape or form, yeah. but From Software has got to be putting a game out this year, right? Dude, oh, they fucking oh, better. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, not going to be Dark Souls. No. There's mm-hmm. probably going to be a Bloodborne 2. Yeah, I would, like, I would that's bet. That's definitely in development. That's probably not coming to PC because it's like a Sony no. joint. But I think right. I think From Software is working on at least two games. And they're working on uh, I think three. Last or... update for me is like it was three. Yeah. Yeah. Is one of them an, a new Armored Core? 
that was that's based yeah. i don't think they ever confirmed it confirmed it but it's like probably an I armor think core unofficially they so came that'll out, come to yeah. pc most yeah. likely I would, I would hope so. I would bet. I would hope so. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like they've they've got to be putting something out this year because it's been mm-hmm. what two years almost since Dark, Dark Souls three? three was late twenty sixteen. I think mm-hmm. November twenty sixteen or something. No, like I thought it was like March or April or something. Oh yeah, it might have been early in the year of twenty seven last year. No, is, is, is shit that recent. Can't even remember. No, because Ring City was la- early last year, so it was the the year before that. It's, yeah, it's March been a while. Yeah. It's been a while since Dark Souls Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't shown anything mm-hmm. since then. I thought they were going to have something like the Sony uh, Games Show a couple months ago. Haven't seen anything. So just that annoyingly short tri- uh, teaser from the Game Awards. That's right. Very very but short. Who yeah. Fuck knows. So I feel like they're gonna go. Oh yeah, here's a game. It's out this year. I hope so. I really hope they mm-hmm. just blindside us with it because I th- discovering the systems and the settings that they've create it, they, they create is like the tr- the best part. I think so. Mm-hmm. Even those front missions. Hopefully, series. it's not just PlayStation exclusive. No, damn it. Right. PC needs it. PC needs it. Uh, for me, it, gosh, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, right now, all I can see is Kingdom Come Deliverance. I don't. I doubt I'll ever finish it. Blinded. But uh, it's it's soon. And it seems big, and it seems like something the PC audience will be super into. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm curious to see uh, the depth of its uh, quests and, and systems yeah. and everything it's got going on. Yeah. Did you answer, Austin? Did I talk over you? He went first. Uh, no, that's no, right. Got it. Monster, Monster Hunter. Hunter. <coughs> Unworld. Me. All right. We'll move on to the next question from maniac 86 oh, i'll throw you one more oh, got dragon ball fighter z oh shit yeah it looks really it's like next really month. cool yeah. yeah yeah yeah. it's gonna be good uh that's by the uh is that by the guilty gear folks yes or, okay arc system mm-hmm. works a really cool like 2d 3d uh blend mm-hmm. i think it's gonna be the rare fighting game that um breaks out of fans of its particular niche like i, I think so. there will be a lot of people who don't care about dragon ball who will enjoy that game yeah because it, it, right. it looks amazing cool good call uh, Maniac86 asks us to share some of our earliest nostalgic gaming memories. He says, I remember sitting in my dad's lap, taking turns playing Red Baron and Hellcasts on an Apple II GS. Do you guys have any early gaming memories? Super fond gaming. Memories. Definitely. I mean, I actually have a, a pretty similar one <laughs> yeah. uh, sitting in my dad's lap playing uh, a thing that we actually wrote. Um, we actually kind of did this question in text form Mm -hmm. uh not that long ago on the site i think it was either what was your first pc game or or like earliest memory something like that uh and i used to play this game i think the name was lhx attack chopper uh you can find this article on the site um if you do a little googling i'm pretty sure that's the name of the game and it was a, a helicopter sim that you would just go on these missions to like do bombing runs or rescue hostages or whatever and it's all like first person cockpit yeah yeah uh with a bunch of different simulated helicopters it's like an early 90s just dos mm-hmm. dos game you could fly an osprey you could fly a black hawk and basically my dad would control the helicopter nice. and when uh other helicopters would come after you they'd be trying to shoot shoot you down with missiles or with machine guns and there was like a button to launch a chafe or chaff mm-hmm. that would uh would distract a missile yeah, potentially yeah, yeah. and then also flares and you'd have know. to use different ones in different situations to keep things from hitting you basically and that was my job was to just like <laughs> hit those buttons at the right time basically that's awesome maybe i shot like the machine gun too i can't remember but mm-hmm. i would just sit there and play that with him and we would almost always crash and burn on every mission because <laughs> it was a really hard game but occasionally we would succeed and that sounds like fun land with like the bullet holes in the, <laughs> in the glass and stuff so that was that was always cool all right on fun game nice austin Fun I guess like my earliest stuff. Um, I wasn't I wasn't into PC gaming. When I was really young. Yeah. I was a Nintendo kid. My earliest like PC gaming memory is probably like uh, what I had by my, my my parents got me like my own computer for the first time for my room. Um, it was like one of those old sort of off gray like Dells or whatever, maybe an HP or something. Um, like stock five, twelve megs of RAM or whatever. And I remember so proudly uh, <laughs> getting two two more sticks of five five hundred twelve yeah. meg RAM. 
because I thought I needed it to play Halo 1. Um, <laughs> and I played that game to death after it uh, with that PC with like a terrible frame rate, but triple my, <laughs> my stock RAM. Incredibly good game on PC. Really like a kind of poor performer though. Like I think you needed yeah. pretty, mm-hmm. probably higher end hardware than it should have actually required to run it uh, right. properly. But man, that game felt great on PC. P- pistol headshots yeah. all day. It, oh gosh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blood Gulch, take me back. Yeah. Um, for me, I, you know, I, yeah, I, I didn't, I wasn't allowed to play games as a kid, but I do remember, or at least like, my dad did not understand that you could play computer games on a computer. So we had a computer, obviously. <laughs> and my mom bought me a, uh, uh, the TIE Fighter X Wing collection. Oh, that's a good mom. And a joystick like a, a flight stick like Holy a, it shit. was like a cheap shitty logitech like you know probably a bargain bin thing but it was enough to uh yeah play that game uh do you think you'd have this job right now if your mom hadn't bought you those two things you know i don't know <laughs> i yeah that's a good question because uh i played a shitload of that like i would wait till my dad was uh uh just, i don't know fishing or out doing something go into my room and like from under my bed pull out my joystick and uh, collection of CDs and, and go upstairs and uh, uh, hang out in the menu. Do you guys remember that menu? You must register. You 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 must register. You no. I, I don't think that was before me. Trying to, <laughs> trying to remember. I've played some the chat. I've well, played no. some of X Wing and I've played some of Tie Fighter and I yeah. can't remember if I played X Wing versus Tie Fighter or not. I didn't like that as much. I think Tie Fighter was my jam. Tie Fighter was um, legit. But uh, just really really good times that really kind of communicated to me uh games i don't know uh, games weren't limited to two button nintendo game pads and a joystick like in, in creating through space in in 3d it's kind of mind-boggling controls yeah. for that that was star wars in the 90s yeah that yeah that was like the biggest representation of star Wars. it was, was mind-blowing as a kid loving that series like it it, mm-hmm. it blew my mind uh but anyway i'll, I'll quit waxing poetic about uh good times and move on we're going to talk about now uh specifically about uh butts wants to know uh our thoughts on the vive going wireless so i don't th- is the pro this is maybe a misunderstanding on my part the pro is not wireless by default is it i believe it's an add-on it's pretty, an add-on pretty sure it's an add-on right, right um i could be wrong about that i'm trying to think i'm pretty sure it's an add-on though uh, mm-hmm. There is already an existing third-party yes. add-on, um, but this is like an official HTC one that's going to use Intel's Ygig technology. And uh, I don't know. It's I'm still a little skeptical. I think I'll be skeptical until I use it. Yeah. That the pic, like the image quality, you know, isn't compressed. That it it looks just as good, and that the latency remains, you know, indistinguishable right. from. Yeah from wired which was kind of the big that's the the big issue the reason there hasn't been wireless before now is Mm -hmm. your latency in vr is incredibly important it needs to be as close to zero as you can get it and wireless is much much harder to do that with than wired but Mm -hmm. assuming it checks all those boxes and works well that's one of the biggest hindrances for yeah. desktop vr is being tethered to that cable so Tripping that'll be that'll be lot. great once that technology becomes good enough to be the standard yep just another yeah. tiny step towards becoming the ideal you know what vr should be yeah. before any yeah. any like mainstream audience can really get into it um for sure pretty much my thoughts exactly because if you can have good wireless vr that really opens up the number of play spaces you can have yeah. in your house yeah definitely it's exciting james we're stuttering again we're stuttering again well we have one question oh, no. our, our audio is still fine so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it and then restart the camera real quick not gonna stop the stream uh but janarin asks what our thoughts are on the abundance of meme games on steam meme games oh what do you think I don't know if I have any thoughts about meme games beyond just like, mm, meh. Yeah, yeah I, I guess it's kind of hard to define like, well, maybe not. I guess if you see a meme game, you kind of know. I'm trying to see if I can find anyone. There, there are a lot of them uh, that are just there for just real, either shock value or just easy cash in on yeah. on the right. most like the most obvious possible joke you know that comes in right. your head that's just the most generic right. 
you know mass market thing you can think of yeah i guess it, i guess it kind of goes back to our, our curation conversation yeah. a little bit um i guess the fact that there's like so many kind of says something but something everything everyone already knows about steam's uh curation process um but other than that they're just kind of like too easy to ignore to get upset about I, I will say I prefer them to the app store's uh, common issue, which is just like a bajillion clone games that are yeah. obviously using the, you know, like the game itself probably doesn't mm -hmm. look anything like Mario, for example, but they're just using like an icon that is just a straight ripoff of an existing game, like mm -hmm. literally using the box art from some released game to sell your like shitty spamware it steam right. doesn't really have that problem like occasionally something mm -hmm. like that will pop up but i'll take somebody's dumb like emoji game on steam over yeah. like literally selling a, a lie you know that is yeah. that is someone else's property yeah and i i think um i'm gonna regret saying this but i think sometimes there are good meme games that are occasionally you haven't played any meme games james i don't i well okay <laughs> these these micro games that are like very obviously uh just simple jokes for like two bucks mm -hmm. i think occasionally you get some good right. ones um and i'm glad to a very limited extent that steam can allow for that i mean like 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 Austin was saying they they're so easy to ignore they like dust in the wind mm -hmm. you, you know new releases on steam there's uh you know uh, still plenty of like robust full fully formed games that it, right. you can just gloss over like whatever uh pay pay the frog rides a bike the game i don't right. know right right uh easily so I prefer if the memes aren't really racist or bigoted. I agree. Right. I agree. But other than that, yeah, yeah I think they're memes. Yeah, I think uh, in the same vein as what you said, Wes, um, I prefer meme games to, like, the achievement farm yeah. games that are on Steam, where it's like yeah. you press start and get a billion achievements because that matters to some people. And, like, there's, like, like the cards or whatever. Um, those are a lot better than those. Yes. Yeah. I'm curious to see, again, this is back to our curation, is uh, I have no di doubt that... Uh, the steam ui update which we thought was going to happen like a year ago when you know some assets leaked supposedly uh i wouldn't doubt they pumped the brakes on that because of the new problems that steam direct sort of introduced or at least like the glut of these games that started appearing maybe mm -hmm. because of or maybe not directly because of steam direct and how they do or do not surface that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so yeah it'll be interesting to see 2013 20 great UI and great storefront <laughs> curation, 18. You can't just put any word into 2018 that you want to. 20 great pasta, 18. 20 great Austin, 18. Right. 20 I'm, I'm, great done. I'm done with you, James. West, 18. I'm done with this. I'm done with this as well. This, that's all the time we have uh, this week on the PC Gamer Show. Uh, thanks for watching. You can always catch up on youtube.com slash PC Gamer for the video on demand. You can go to pcgamer.com slash tag slash podcast for links to uh, our iTunes subscription. You can get our R RSS feed there and uh, just you know download the MP3 directly if that's your jam. Um, yeah, until next week. Uh, until next week in games. Tweet it, James. Tell him you 2018 him. <laughs> Don't do that. Yep. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no. 20 great team, not 2018. <laughs> Damn it. Like yin and yang across this table. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you next week. Thank you. Goodbye.